Right, well, good morning, um, and we'll get off to a, a, an early start. Um, if I'm being honest, I've found this sermon probably one of the hardest in recent times to actually prepare. And that's not because the topic itself is particularly difficult. The reason I found it so hard is because there's so many amazing things within this that um, it's been difficult to actually try and get it into a nice, concise package. I could, if I'm being honest, I could go on for quite a long time about this. So, so I've been struggling trying to get it so it's just right. So, so what I'd like to start with is asking three questions which I'm not expecting you to answer, but I want you to bear in mind as we go through the next 25 minutes. Do you ever feel alone? Do you ever want to change a situation or change yourself? And are you ever afraid? What we're going to talk about today will answer or will give you some thoughts about those three topics. Okay? And the passage that we're going to be looking at is actually literally one verse. And this, this verse, this passage, is part of the series that we've been running now for nearly six weeks, I think it is, I think this might be six weeks, called Where Heaven Meets Earth. And what we're talking about is those places in the Bible where we can clearly see where heaven and earth interact. And so we've been talking about the temple, we've been talking about the, the, te- uh, the meeting tent where Moses used to meet with God. And today, the passage that we're looking at is actually found in 1 Corinthians. Now, the passage actually says, the verse says this, it's in 1 Corinthians 6, and it's verse 19, and the verse says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, who you have received from God? Let me read it again. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? Now that verse is taken from a letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he's actually in a a, a section where he's talking about sexual sin. And he's basically saying to them, don't commit sexual sin. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And he's using that as a way of helping them to think about what are you doing? Okay? But he introduces or or brings back to us a profound truth. The truth is that if you are a Christian, if you have asked Jesus to be your Lord, if you've repented, then God places his Holy Spirit in you. Now, you don't need to take my word for it. We can take the word of somebody who was very intimately involved in this, and that word, the the, the words are from Jesus. So what I want to do now is I want to read you Jesus' own words. I'm going to read you a passage, John 14, and I'm going to read you the section where Jesus talks to his disciples about what's about to happen for them and what has happened for us okay so if you want to follow it it's john 14 and i'm going to start at verse 6 and there's some very famous words in here things that people have preached about a lot but i'd ask that you open your hearts and take this in and remember that this is jesus talking to you Okay, he's talking to me. He's talking to us as his disciples. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip, one of his disciples, said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Show us God. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? 
Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. So Jesus is talking to his disciples and saying, I am God. Father is in me. Father in this context is God. And I am in God. And what I'm doing, I do because the Father says to do it. And I'm only doing what the Father says. So I do what God says. I, I listen to God. He is in me. I am in him. And when you see me, you see the Father. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives within you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. Now, all that seems complicated and complex. But Jesus is simply saying, when I die, the world will celebrate. But I will be raised again. I will be alive and I will live forever. But I'm one man. Jesus became a man. So I cannot be with you all. So I'm going to send another the Holy Spirit. He and I are the same. He will be in you. I will go to the Father, but He will be in you. On the day, on that day when the Holy Spirit fills you, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. A complicated sentence, but what he's saying is, we can literally be part of the Godhead. Him in us, us in him. We can have this contact with God that is so intimate that we describe it as us being in him and him being in us. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Jesus, I'm missing just to cut it shorter. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid.
These are amazing words. There is no other religion on the planet which says that God will come and reside inside you. That you do not have to walk this life alone. That you can literally walk hand in hand with God. So when we talk about, in, in this series, when we've been discussing the whole idea of where heaven meets earth, where does heaven meet earth now? Heaven meets earth in us. In us. We are the place where heaven and earth interact. We have God with us. We are never, ever, ever alone. Now, I've said that to some people in the past, and they go, oh, that's really scary. I don't know if I want God with me all the time. He'll see what I do. Absolutely. Do you think you've got a secret? You have no secrets. Not your thought, not an action, nothing. You have no secrets. He knows it all. Now we all know this. If, you actually, if I was to have a questionnaire and said that to you, you know, does God know everything? The answer would be yes. But it's actually understanding, isn't it? I have no secrets. My emotions, my feelings, my fears, my doubts, the things I've done, the things I haven't done. He knows them all, inside out. He knows why I did it. Now that, that can be fearful, and it's not a bad thing if it is. We should be nervous about how we behave. But at the same time, it's wonderful. Because he knows me. And do you know what's more important than the fact he knows me? He loves me. God loves me as this mess. With all the things I do wrong. Jesus died for me as a mess. He loved me that much that he gave his life for me with all the things I've done wrong, said wrong, all the swearing, all the, the wrong behaviour, all the times when I've done something I shouldn't have done, all the things that where I should have done something and I didn't do it. He loves me despite all that. He loves me enough that he's prepared to give his life for me. Today we're remembering the people who sacrificed their lives in warfare. Jesus did it out of pure unadulterated love for people who were guilty for me for me so when I say Jesus is with you when I say he knows everything about you this is not this is not something that we should be scared or sad about this is wonderful it's wonderful because he loves you so much Knowing everything about you. Knowing everything about me. Now what that means is that... Oh, that's okay. <laughs> what that means is, is that our interaction with Jesus is no longer constrained by a physical location. So it's not that I meet God on Sunday at church. I need to be in the cathedral I need to be in the church building. I'm afraid now, all those places are just pretty. They might have history. They might have emotional impact for you. But apart from that, they're bricks and mortar and stone. And people might have put a lot of effort into them. And God bless them for what they did as they made a sacrifice to him. But they're just places. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere. 
And this isn't a profound truth that just happened a moment. Read Psalm 139. The psalmist knew that no matter where we go, whether into the highest points or the darkest depths, Jesus, God is with us in those places. And we can talk to him. And when we say, when we pray, God be with me, the reality is he's already there. What we're actually saying is, God, I want to know you here. And that's about us turning and seeing him. Because he's already here. He wants to talk to us. He's ready in a second. That's why we can always talk to the Father. That's why we can always just turn. And the moment we turn, there he is. The moment we pay attention to him, he's there. So, if you ever feel alone, God knows that, just reach out, turn to him, and just simply say, I feel alone. You're not alone, but you might well feel it. And even if it's in a terrible place, you can still ask him to be with you. As I came in, I was saying that I sat down with Alan and we were just chatting. And I said to Alan and Jim, today we're remembering all the people that gave their lives. I bet more people have met with Jesus on the battlefield, more people have touched him at that moment in time and reached out and said, God be with me, than virtually anywhere else. I wonder just how many people on the song cried out to Jesus. And how many were touched by him, by being there. So, no matter where you can, you know, Jesus is there. So the second part then is, what else does that bring? Well, Jesus is really clear, isn't he? Because he says, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Now, that does not mean a carte blanche of you get all your wishes. And we all know that. What he's saying is, if you listen to me and hear it, there is power. Now, we've been having teaching. Matt's done some wonderful teaching. We've had lots of teaching on the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. The danger that we can have is we can get focused on those things. Those are the outcome. They are not the focus. The focus is Jesus. If you focus on Jesus, if you obey Jesus, if you do what he commands, if we talk to him and live with him and allow him in and actually consciously say, Lord, come in. I, I give you all these things. I'll tell you the truth. Here it is. This is what I've done. These are the things I think. Right? Then what naturally happens is we change. Now Moses went and sat in the tent of meeting and when he sat in the tent of meeting he talked with God and when he came out he glowed. He didn't decide he was going to glow. He didn't stick a light bulb on his head to glow. He just glowed. When we go in and when we spend time with Jesus the fruit of the Spirit is naturally formed within us. We start to change. We start to become like him now we can resist we can resist but if we are prepared to be open he will change us and when we're in situations where we need God's power the power is there because God is with us God is with us he doesn't we don't require some superstar we don't require some holy person Jesus is the power. The Holy Spirit is the power. He can do it. So if we, if we pray into situations, if we need power in situ situations, the Holy Spirit is with us. So it can happen. And it will start to happen naturally as we allow our desires and aspirations, our manipulation of systems and so on, us trying to make things go the way we want it to go, 
If instead we allow God to be in command, things will happen. They just do. And sometimes we dismiss them. That was a coincidence. That was, that, you know, ooh, wasn't it fortunate that that happened? No, this is, this is just God doing his stuff as we allow him to do it. So the power is there. We just need to obey what Jesus is saying. If you love me, you will obey my commands. So, if you, if you want to see a situation changed, if you want a change in yourself. Now, there are two things here, two blockages. One is the obvious one, which we've already just mentioned, which is that we're wanting something and actually God disagrees with us. So don't expect it to happen. Okay? And sometimes we might go, well, I really want something and I can't see why God wouldn't give it me. So Paul had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it was, but he had this thorn in the flesh. It was something he didn't like. He prayed to God. He has a good relationship with God. He was expecting it to disappear. It didn't disappear. So he prayed twice more. Still doesn't disappear. And so he said to God, what on earth's going on here? Yeah, I thought you'd want this to go. And God's response was, actually, no, I want you to rely on me. I know, I know you don't like it, but actually there's a lesson here. I need you to rely on me. And there are times when we might go to God and say, I'd really like this to happen. And God goes, well, I'm really sorry it's not going to happen because that's not the best thing here. And we might not understand it. And in fact, we might be cross. We might go, well, that's not fair, God. I don't agree with you. I disagree with you. I think this should be happening. Why is this not happening? And God might, well, just turn around and say, I'm sorry. You haven't got the bigger picture. This is what's best. So there are times when we and God disagree. It's okay. Just allow God to be God. But secondly, there's times when we want to change so much or a situation so much that we try to take control of it. And we try to change it. And we just ask God to bless us trying to change it. When God says, no, I'll do it. It's my power, it's not yours. I'll do it the right way. You're going to put your foot in it. Let me do it. Okay. So there are times when, let me say to you, if you're really trying to stop something in your life and you're putting a massive effort in, perhaps it's time that you stop doing that and you just said to God, can you change this for me? And I'll listen to you. And then when, so for me, uh, when I reach for that thing that I shouldn't eat and God says, mm, probably not best now. I won't do that just now. I actually go, okay, I won't eat it. Rather than going, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just eat it anyway. So, so those are the barriers to allowing, you know, for things to happen in our lives. But give them to God. You'll see. I've seen remarkable things in my life. Things that I never thought were possible. The last thing is about being afraid. I don't know about you, but I think probably nearly every day something will just trigger, trigger a little shimmer in me where I could go, ooh, I don't, I don't know. I could be a bit nervous about that. Now, some people are really very confident and go, it doesn't impact them at all. Fine. I think for most of us, there are times when we definitely just are nervous in relationships or about our family, circumstances we're in. When I was coming here, I was a bit twitchy. Jesus says in those situations, he can bring his peace. We can be at rest. And the reason we can be at rest is because we go, God, I believe you're okay. I trust you. And what is about to happen might not be something I want, and it might not be something I'm, that's pleasant. But I know you're in charge. And so I choose, I choose to trust you. And we're getting close to the end, so let me just remind you. Jesus, in Gethsemane, said to his dad, please know, 
please no. Is there another way? I don't want to do this. And his dad said, no, I'm sorry, there is no other way. And so Jesus said, okay, okay, I need you, but okay. And so he could go through the cross because he trusted his dad. He trusted his dad to bring him through. The only evidence he had on earth was the fact that he knew his father. He knew his father and he knew his dad wouldn't hurt him for no reason and he knew his dad would bring him through. But he knew it because he knew the father, not because he had any physical proof. And if you want peace, Peace comes when you say to Jesus, I trust you. I'm able to let go because you are in charge and I trust you. And that is a choice. It's not an emotion. So when you're afraid, turn to him and say, like with everything else, Holy Spirit, I can't do this myself. I don't know, I don't know in this situation how to be. But I trust you. And I will trust you. And it becomes, the more you do it, the, the easier it becomes and the more you can accept him. And that peace which passes all understanding becomes part of your life. But it requires that step of faith to say, I know you and I trust you. Now can you see why I struggled with this? Because these three things are all very big. Because each of us struggle at times with feeling alone, especially in challenging times. We all wish we were better than we are. And we all wish we could change. And there are situations we would love to change. And yet it's God who's got to change them. And we've got to allow him to flow through us and change us and so on. And finally, when we're afraid, it's easy to allow just all to override. But if we turn to him, if we trust him, we can find that peace. And as I say today, I don't know how many people, my dad was not a Christian when he went into battle. It really hurt him. And it took him 30 years after that to recover. And he became a Christian 30 years later and he changed dramatically. He changed when he knew that God loved him and cared for him and had been with him in all those things. He became a different man. I don't know how many people on the battlefield have met with Jesus. I hope it's many. I hope it's many. But for us, God is in you today. You have it all there. Satan tries to persuade us we haven't, but we have. He is in us, God. God is in us. So Lord, we just want to say thank you. We want to praise you and bless your name and say you are incredible. And Lord, I want to say to you, I am so grateful you know everything. I am so grateful you know my, me inside out and all my weaknesses and strengths. And I know, I know you love me. And that is truly tremendous. So, Lord, come and fill us. May we allow you access and freedom in our lives. And may we walk in the knowledge that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen.